Belshire Vestige. Welcome to Belshire Vestige. In the bottom right corner of the map, we have the blue Protoss from China, hailing from Invictus Gaming, one of the most storied esports organizations. It is Max Seb. Did you like my X marks the spot? It did. It was it was a little it was a little rough. Too much. But you're working on it. You're working on it. And in the top left, we have from Team Acer, the representative of all of the Western StarCraft II professional gamers. It is Scarlet. And Scarlet is also a, one of those players who's sometimes not afraid to ten pool, but she hasn't chosen it for this occasion. But sometimes she just does. She's no Nurchio. Nurchio has cojones, man. It doesn't matter what game it is. 13 pull, 10 pull. Yellow swag. Or like a 12, or like 11 pull. See, he likes to do sometimes weird stuff like that. I like that, though. Really keeps Protoss on their toes, but against a gateway expansion, definitely think something like fast pulls uh, give you negative equity. Like, if you do it 100 times, 70% of the times you're going to end up losing or being behind. I just feel like it doesn't doesn't work out all too well. What are your thoughts on pool first or fast pools? I think they're great if you know a certain style of the player, guaranteed. Yeah. Some players are a little bit too predictable. And for a while that was Rain's biggest drawback, who is, by the way, playing in the finals of Korea very soon, so definitely check it out against Maru. But Rain, when he first came out as a rookie, was a very predictable player. And then he started cheesing a little bit more, and I, and I think he's grown a lot since then. And that's why I, f I peg him as a favorite to win, because I really feel like he has better just overall skill than Maru. Uh, but Max said is also one of these players who's just pretty predictable in the fact that he is going to go gateway expand almost every time and try to go for some kind of early aggression. Scarlet's been able to receive it for the most part. Not the first game, but in the second game, he did it really well. And now he's inches away from being able to get his spot into the round of eight. And I really feel like if Max said can piece together the everything, you know, the just get the pile on the right time, then that game would have been different, don't you think? Substantially yeah, different. Yeah, 30, 45 seconds faster. Yeah, like his units would have been with him for 15 more seconds. Mm -hmm. That's 15 more seconds. That's seven stalkers are doing damage. That adds up. That's like a good four, five roaches, let's say. That's a whole hatchery of production almost. And, and that's kind of where everyone kind of gets this, oh my, I just got protossed, right? Where everything <laughs> just bulldozes you and everything, nothing seems to die from protoss and everything stays alive. But Scarlet did get away with having 67 drones for a seven gate Phoenix attack. Yeah, and 67 drones is uh, actually optimally saturated across all your bases. You need 22 drones per base, so 22 times 3, you're good to go. And on top of that, she didn't have all of her gases, so that means her mineral income was a lot more than normal. That made her like just a, a freaking machine at just making units. She didn't have to worry at all about drones. She even said, hey, I'm going to throw some drones away just to make sure that I will win this battle. Because you don't want, as you said, to get protossed, right? Just that... that <laughs> emerging ball of death that is imminent and ready to kill you. No, she's like, okay, let me hmm. remove that ball off the field and then take the win. Well, now that Scarlet has that in mind from the previous game, now we head over here to game three. Maxed is going for a Stargate, and Scarlet scouts it with a Zergling almost immediately. I'm, I'm a little curious because we don't see Stargate openings as common as a lot of early gateway pokes on this map. You mm -hmm. can use these little crevices between the natural and the third base to kind of put pylons in. We see players like Stardust really love doing this. Yeah. And then you can pressure the third and the natural, which is kind of a couple arm length away. It's very, it's very far. And it, it, it kind of punishes. But instead, Max is going to go for a Stargate, and it has been scouted. And Scarlet now knows everything what Protoss is up to. How do you feel about... Um, just how fast it's able to mobilize uh, relative to something like a robotics twilight type of build. You know, you focus on the blink, the uh, the, the obvious century immortals. Uh, do you feel like this is a, a better or worse style than that normal stuff that we see? Mainly Puck oh, do. You, you mean Max kind of Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan that Stargate's never wrong in PvZ. It's mm -hmm. just that sometimes it's not the best choice. 
there's just so many options you, you can have. And I love the fact that some Protosses are still are trying to incorporate even Oracles into PvZ as well. You get some good scouting, you deny information. And I like going Stargate into Fast Third, because I feel like Void Rays control so much space early on. And if you turtle behind that, it's just a good way to play. Although I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's kind of like turtling behind spine crawlers, Spore Crawlers and... Yeah. And I don't like it, but I think it's a good style to play if you want to win. Sure, sure. It's like... Yeah. It just gives you a lot of options. I agree. Um, By yourself, Andre. And then I after that, comment on Scarlet's build. I really don't like it. I you don't like Stargate? I, I don't like Stargate in this position. I feel like it's so... You're weakening yourself so much. The whole point of gateway pressure in the beginning stage or going gateway expand is to have that fast warp gate and then the range of a lot of gateway all-ins or, or gateway pressures, right? You, you have to defend against that fine line. As soon as you go Phoenixes, though, it, it immediately cuts so many opportunities. If you want to look at it, Phoenix is one Zealot and one Sentry, or at least the resources of that. When I see four Phoenixes out in the field, I'm saying to myself, no gateway pressure is possible. And if it is, it's going to be very, very weak. So that's why you can do things like get very fast upgrades, you know, get uh, just queens to defend against everything because you know he can't really do anything. Well, in <laughs> well, I guess that's kind of subjective because Matt McSett is dropping, has dropped four more gateways, so it's a similar build to what we saw earlier. The only thing is, again, Matt McSett should be warping in somewhere by the fourth base of Scarlet and trying to harass if he wants to. Now, he is m making moves as if he wanted to take a third base. I don't know how genuine that is, and oh. I don't think it's genuine at all. Oh, no. Zergling's kind of catching the sentries out of position and baiting a lot of force shields out. Oh, wow, and able to take out one of the sentries. This is a big, big blunder. Remember, 1-1 uh, one, one is finished. Two or three of the sentries here, Gritor. Oh, is it really? Yeah, Holy. it was a lot more. And now Scarlet's in full production mode. Now, keep in mind, he also has double Evo Chamber production and the pathogen glands. So this entire third base thing has been... has not been sold. She, uh, Scarlet saw how many warpings were coming, and she should know what's coming. Yes. The only thing Scarlet does not have right now is the fourth hatchery. I, I can't express enough how much I think that's important. When you're doing a Zergling base style, you need that extra larva to burst oh. and react to your opponents. Again, Scarlet pushing in here. No Scarlet is getting into murky waters here, Froden. I'm not liking this. Throwing down some emergency spine crawlers, giving up the third base. She's taking to hive, Froden. Okay, I mean you can get the I mean, if you can get the ultralist out or something, you can completely destroy this push, but it's still very tough. Max said is going to take this third uncontested, and the best part is if anything gets too hazy, he just recalls. Yeah. He just he recalls. Right. And then you can drop the robotics. Eighth gate is finishing. Oh, Max said making me write a game later than he needed to be. And the pylon is up, ready to reinforce. I like what's happening. Zerglings are coming in for the flank. Oh, oh. oh the Zerglings almost no, no, picked no, no, themselves no. Oh, a death sentence. Oh, gosh. And now they will, while some of the Zells will start working onto the spine crawlers, hallucinating some of the Zells to absorb the damage as well. Max said, trying to end this early while sectioning out some Zerglings and getting Ascension into a nice safe spot. But the Zerglings are going to focus the Stalkers from behind. The Investors are trying to fungal and buy time oh for my the God. spine crawlers to finish Scarlet. Scarlet really Did she do this? Be able to defend? It's so close. Uh, she's going to do it. Unreal. The upgrades coming into a big factor in this, along with the Queens, the constant transfuses, and taking out those Phoenixes, disabling them from disabling the Queens. Beautifully done. And now, all of a sudden, these two two Zerglings are going to rain hell on his opponent. Because guess what? What are the upgrades of Max said? Zero, zero, zero. That's three zeros, Frodan. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Andre, I counted as you were listing all the zeros in it. And now Max said has fully walled off his base, but how is he going to be able to handle any amount of Ultralis? Scarlet only can afford about one. But she will have 3-3 three, three and Adrenal Glands finishing up in just a couple of minutes. Yeah. How will Max said be able to respond? And Ferdinand, we've seen historically that all you need is one. Right? Well, like, to break the, the force fields. To break the force fields and just constant oh. transfuses. How about zero, Andre? Is he, oh my and Scarlet's going to try to confront with 2-2 two, two against the 1-1. One, one. It's taking a oh very long time. God. And now these Zerglings oh are Oh my god, are you everything. kidding me? This just isn't <laughs> happening. 
<laughs> Max, Max is like, yeah, it's it's cool. I got this. The Guys, don't worry. The investors and Zerglings on the middle of the map is pushing. I cannot believe what I am witnessing. As Max said, it's almost out of options. He's trying to take a third base, but he has no he units can. to make sure that it's safely secured. Ferdinand, sentries do four damage. Four damage to those Zerglings. That's also their DPS, because sentries fire 1%. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Four DPS. That's less than a worker. Well, and and think do. when one Ultralisk comes out with chitinous plating, it's going to have six armor. The sentries do nothing. <laughs> they do will it. do one damage. <laughs> and it's going to be a very good time. Well, she's going to go also incorporate some Vipers wow. into the army instead of the Ultralisk. Yeah. It does make a little bit of sense, though, if you think about it. Blinding Cloud and then chain fungling down everything, making those Zerglings really do some work. But let me tell you, Scarlet looks unstoppable in game number three over here, just defending that perfect, perfect attack by Max said. I, I was actually very surprised for it, Anthony. I, I still would have liked the Ultralisk because she has Queens of Chance Fuse. Oh, just nope, as I there said, it is. Scarlet is going to incorporate some Ultralisk into her composition. 3 3 is about to finish along with Kitan is playing. Max said, not in the best position either. And Scarlet's been relentless with her creep spread all over the map as almost every single avenue of attack and flank has been littered with this purple creep from the Zerg race and Scarlet in prime <laughs> position to end this game in series right here. Is this a troll over here? Is this like manor meals with the uh, sport crawlers? No, isn't it for the vipers to? I, I get they're very far away. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they, they they overshot just a little <laughs> bit. Green you can force steal them from running away too. I know. That's. Can uh -oh. you if they're if they're uh, someone orders some sport crawlers? <laughs> Anybody? There's no. like a drone lifting it on the bottom, and people don't see it. So scared, man. Okay, three three is finished. Ultras on the way out right now. There is just, there's I, I, there's just no way for Max Ed to hold this. Absolutely none. Scarlet's going to try to pick the fight immediately while Max Ed gets a good spread, but the Ultras will break the front. The Colossus gets abducted, and the last few seconds of Max Ed being able to hold off is going to tick down. GG.